Just in case you didn't already know, this is a drop cap. It's where you have the first character of a paragraph descending at least two lines. You'll typically see them in a book like a fairy tale. So I'd like to show you how you can build one from scratch. So in this document just here, I have a whole bunch of placeholder text. And there are multiple places where you can actually add and then change your drop cap. So I'll just uh, double click to get inside of this paragraph. Firstly, you don't need to come in here and select that first character at all. The drop cap is actually a function of a paragraph. So all you need to do is have your cursor as a minimum inside that paragraph. So up in the control panel just up here, you don't want to be in the character options, you want to be in the paragraph options. We are looking for these two buttons just here. You can also see them in the paragraph panel just here and also in the properties panel. Now, if you scroll down to the paragraph section, you won't actually see them. You first have to hit this little group of three dots just down here and then you can see them just down here. Now, I think I'll work out of the paragraph panel just for simplicity. So I'll just close up the properties panel to give us a little bit more room. Okay, so again, we've got our cursor flashing inside of this first paragraph just here. And then let's go up to the options either here or again, like I said, from the paragraph panel. And this first button just here, drop cap number of lines, I'll increase that from zero to one. Nothing happens. It's not until we push it to two that we start to see the drop cap showing up just here. So this is looking great. Let me push this a little further. Maybe go up to four lines, that looks great. And then the next button along, you'll probably never use this, but just in case you need it, you can actually increase the number of characters that are included in the drop cap. Again, personally, I've only ever used one, but if you need to increase that, that's how you can do it just there. Okay, so this is looking great. Now, also there might be occasions where you need to increase the spacing between the drop cap letter and the next letter along in that first word. So I've actually made another video on um, tracking and kerning. You can check that out if you like. But the super quick summary just there, if you need to change the spacing between a pair of characters, just get your cursor flashing between the two of them, hold down the Alt or the Option key, and then press the right arrow. And if you go too far, you can always, while still holding down an Alt or Option, press the left arrow to bring them back. Okay, so that's, uh, that's adding the drop cap, nice and easy. Um, for most of you, that's probably all you'll need to do. I'd just like to step it up a notch just now and show you how you can actually incorporate this into uh, capturing it in a paragraph style. So you can see if I select the uh, rest of my paragraphs just in here, I actually have the body paragraph style that's actually been applied to all of them. Make sure I'll select all of the text just here and you can see the body style has been applied. The reason I have the plus sign of course is because I've been messing with the formatting of the first paragraph. The plus sign is the Adobe way of letting us know that we've actually overridden some of the attributes of this paragraph style. Okay, so I'm thinking I'd like to create a new paragraph style for our drop cap. So I've got my cursor flashing inside of there from the paragraph styles flat menu. Let's choose new paragraph style. And I'll just call this intro. I'm happy to base it on the body paragraph style, that style which already exists. And you'll notice if I come down to drop caps and nested styles, there it is just there. It's actually captured the fact that I wanted a drop cap over four lines and just that single character just there. Now I'll show you this in just a few moments. I'll come back in here in just a few moments, but if I choose okay just now, there it is. We've got our intro paragraph style just in there. And you can see, for example, if I clicked into another paragraph and set it to intro, fantastic. It gives us that drop cap. Very nice. I'll just change that back to body. So again, let's step this up a notch. If I go into my character styles panel, you can see ahead of time, I've actually created myself a drop cap character style. If I open that up, you can see the sole purpose in life for this style is to actually change the font to this Baroque text JF. So that's all this character style does. It just changes to a different font. So with that in mind, let's jump back into my intro paragraph style and come back down to the drop caps and nested styles section. And where it says character styles just here, let's change that to that drop cap character style. Fantastic, now on first inspection, this looks great. I've got the nice different Gothic type font coming in, but very quickly you'll notice that I have a problem where the descenders on this character are actually overlapping the lines of text below. But what's great is this is an easy fix. There's an option here called scale for descenders. If I turn that on, 
Very nice, InDesign shrinks that character so that it no longer overlaps the line below. But now I'm thinking that drop cap letter is maybe a little bit too small, but that's an easy fix. Here where it says drop caps lines, I can increase that to say six lines, that looks great, and I can choose OK. So just to show you how well this is working now, I can easily get my cursor inside of another paragraph and turn on the intro paragraph style. Fantastic, and of course if we need to adjust the horizontal spacing, I can easily click between that drop cap and the next letter along, hold down my alter option, and press the right arrow a couple of times just to increase the spacing. So that's it guys, drop caps in InDesign. Hope it helps.